Good morning. Welcome back again. Well, actually, it's not morning for me. It's the afternoon. It's just turned noon here in New Zealand. Uh, we're doing another Dungeon Master preparation. Uh, this is uh, this is the fourth one I've done this week, and um, <laughs> we're going to be covering locations. There, I did a poll, and people did request that we cover a town. So yes, I've got a whole lot of slides. I'm going to do a Q&A, of course, as I normally do. With everything that I do, there's usually a presentation aspect to it. And then because it's a live stream, we will also have a Q&A and an opportunity for you to go and give feedback and stuff like that. And then we'll actually make a location. And then because the, the poll stipulated people would like town, that is the thing that we will build. So that's that's part of the, the practical element for this um, for today. I'm going to run a poll. Feel free to uh, select something that uh, fits you and um, get ready. We've got quite a lot to cover. Uh, how's it going, uh, Nicola? Oh, how's it going, Gabby? Sorry, almost forgot again. Um, <laughs> welcome. So my suggestion to you is grab some food, get some drink, make sure you're comfortable. There's some stuff to cover, uh, more than enough to keep us busy for a good two hours. But certainly the presentation side of stuff will take a lot less time. Hi, welcome to How to D&D. My name is Fred Weller and today I want to talk about Dungeons and Dragons. Well, actually, we're not really necessarily talking about Dungeons and Dragons because this is very portable. We're not necessarily talking about a dungeon crawl. This is actually a Dungeon Master preparation tutorial. This is lesson four, creating locations. And with this, we are going to actually go through the nuts and bolts of actually creating a location. It could be for Dungeons and Dragons, it could be for something else, it really doesn't matter. It's really up to you what you use it for. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cover all the different aspects that we're going to cover for this lesson, and then we'll break it all down, and uh, yeah, you'll, you'll get the gist. So our overview is uh, inspiration for creating locations, so I'm going to cover some of that. Uh, we're going to go through how to create locations, because there is a process, and you can change that process of course. We're going to deal with the location details and information. We're also going to look very specifically at a specific location layout. So there are lots of different types of um, locations that you will reuse over time. And the one that I have selected for today is actually the town. Uh, I didn't choose it, actually. Uh, you as the viewers uh, who answered the poll requested the town. And then we're going to do some miscellaneous recommendations. And that's sort of our overview in terms of what we will be covering for today. The objectives, as always, will be to explain how to build your adventure location for Dungeons & Dragons. Uh, we're going to be covering the demonstration aspect, so we'll actually build an adventure location. Now, when I say that, every location is an adventure location, okay? Whether it's used for the actual adventure or outside of the adventure, outside of the fighting monsters. and Every location is something you need to build at some point to various degrees. And of course there will be a practical example of a specific location which is the town for today. So that's, that's our objectives. That is what we are trying to achieve. Uh, you will find that D&D Beyond does have a combat encounter builder. Uh, for Dungeons & Dragons 5e, it is available for free on D&D Beyond. It is in beta. Uh, they don't currently have their maps or their virtual tabletop. They have a three-dimensional virtual tabletop in development. It's not been released yet. We've just heard about it. And when that becomes released, then that's what I will point you in the direction for because I will imagine that most people are going to try to build their own environments using three-dimensional um, assets. But we will talk a little bit about other types of tools uh, as we go. So that's what we're dealing with. So let's deal with the inspiration side of creating locations. I have my own process, I'm sure everybody does. And the location um, inspiration process that I use personally has changed over time. But ultimately, the easiest way I find is to, to use real world architecture and landmarks. If you focus on real world stuff that you actually can see and uh, research, I find that to be far more useful than anything else. Um, finding an image of a historic building can be very useful or a structure or even an area. 
and I will use that to build my fantasy location or my science fiction location or whatever I want to, to actually create off real world architecture. And of course you will adjust it. Uh, books and movies offer many sort of landscapes or places that are quite exotic that you can borrow from or steal outright, that's fine. Video games that have a sort of a role play game um, experience they often present very dynamic environments that you can explore, so you can you cannibalize their ideas as well. It's probably a little bit hard sometimes to transfer the concept of a video game uh, environment or uh, location and then turn it into a, um, a two-dimensional space. But if you're able to do that, then great. Then there's pictures, paintings, and landscapes. Uh, this is art done in oil or an acrylic or even a sort of watercolor. I'm not a fan of watercolor myself. Normally, I prefer oil and acrylic. But, uh, you know, like legitimate artists often will paint things that uh, are quite evocative and you might be able to use for your game. Also, let's not forget that uh, pre-made role-play game um, adventures that are published have many locations with maps that you can just outright steal or borrow or adjust if you want to for your games. And then lastly, I would say the Google search, the Pinterest, the ArtStation and um, DeviantArt, you can go and look for images for locations. If you're having kind of a struggle coming, to, coming to, <laughs> together with getting like, okay, well, I need something, but what will it be? So six different ideas that should point you in the right direction for actually uh, getting some inspiration for your location. Right. We actually have to build it now. Now that we've got some inspiration, we've jotted down some ideas, how do you create a location or locations for your adventure? Again, I'm going to take you back to using real world architecture, plans, uh, layouts. Of, there's often like diagrams that are provided that you can find on the internet or in books, uh, deck plans of a ship. The floor plans of a building or ruins, they, they often, you can find these in books and on the internet. And they're really useful. I actually find them hugely helpful in determining what makes sense. And then I want you to take that. Once you've got that part, go and check out Sly Flourish. And he has a book called Fantastic Locations. And here's a preparation method. Now, you don't even have to go and get the book because I'm going to break it down in the span of like one sentence as to what you're going to, because there's some key things that he says, okay? So you take your location that's based off real world architecture, you make it old, you make it large, you give it a unique feature or features, like something that stands out. You give it a function, so you make sure you know what it's for, and you give it an interesting name. Like, if you can do those things, those five things, you have pretty much made yourself a fantastic location that should really sort of um, pull your players into the game. Focus on making the location a reusable set piece is really helpful for the future. Like, future preparation, if you can make a location that you can reuse over and over again, you save yourself a lot of work. So many locations tend to repeat themselves. And so their structure will look very similar. Or you can reuse them um, for another campaign or at a later date. Or the player's characters may return to that location. So you don't have to keep making more locations over and over again. So the structure, the basic layout of things like a village, a town, very much the same. Cities tend to have a very similar layout depending on whether it's a coastal city or it's an inland city. Uh, castles, um, they do generally have their, the, the same sort of layout, although I find with castles, they can vary right across history. Like, there doesn't seem to be a single castle that was exactly the same. Uh, strongholds, we're just talking about fortresses. It's another sort of concept to the, the castle. Uh, the tomb, so where you bury somebody. Pyramids, which is just another way of burying somebody with a great huge mountain in the way. Uh, the maze, look, mazes will always be different in some way, but you can pull them from very easy sources to do most of your work. Like there are so many books that are just full of mazes that you can just port over to your game. Uh, the temple, temple structure is usually the same. A shrine is very easy to do. Make sure you have a shrine developed at some point. The mine structure, Almost all mines are built the same way 
for obvious reasons, usually safety reasons. And then caves, well, caves are usually pretty easy because a cave can be anything. <laughs> you can make whatever you like. Um, and if you look at some real world caves, you'll see that uh, it's very dependent on how the weather um, wears out or the water uh, changes the um, the rock and how it sort of um, wears away some, some sections and not others. Your monster layer, so a lot of monster layers will tend to be very similar and you'll find that Volo's Guide to Everything actually has a lot of information on different types of monster layers that you, that essentially got the same structure and so you just you just I would suggest Volo's Guide to Monsters one of the best books out there for this that sort of thing and then your death trap dungeon may very well follow very similar um, structure the the treasure vault will be very similar and then sailing ships almost always most sailing ships have the same floor or, or deck plan so you don't really have to do a lot of work so when you make one you've really got a um, hundred so making a deck plan for a sailing ship, if you make one, you've probably got enough and that's it. <laughs> you don't really have to do very much. You might want to do a few tweaks and that's it, but there's not a lot to do. The Dungeon Master's Guide has some useful information on pages 292 through to 295. And I find that it does actually offer a lot of different stuff. I mean, it's not as much as I would like because I would always wind up taking that and then expanding on it in some way, but it's certainly super useful and, uh, and, and I would highly recommend looking at what you can do with that. Next, ensure the location is interactive for the characters. There's no point creating a location if it's just a backdrop, if it's essentially just a, <laughs> a green screen, I guess, or um, a panel or um, a matte painting, like, what was the point in creating the location? Unless its only purpose is supposed to be like one or two words and that's all you needed and it's like it's very far away and they can't ever get there. But that's not really creating a location, is it? Um, that's just creating a, a backdrop. But make it interactive because players like to interact with environments just as they like to interact with creatures and monsters. Um, it's one of the major tools you know, in terms of Dungeons and Dragons, um, one of the pillars is exploration, right? One of the three pillars is exploration. So making your location interactive actually allows people who are participating in that particular aspect, the exploration aspect, and that's certainly part of adventuring, that it helps all of that. So make it interactive. Do something with it. Uh, draw a picture with digital tools or a pencil and paper. Change what you need or what to, <laughs> what you feel you need to for your adventure. <clears throat> Not everything that you do, whether you base it on reality or somebody else's work, needs to stay the same. Okay, And then label the map with its different locations. So you break it up. So you might give the map a, a, a title or a name and then you're going to give it some, its basic sort of label it. Like what's here? Is, this is room one. Is this the um, the guard room or whatever it is if that's what we're talking about? Or are we talking about the village green? Or are we talking about the town hall? <clears throat> so label it so you know what it is. Not difficult stuff to, to figure out. Okay, we're going to get into a little bit more detail here with some of the stuff we need to cover, and that is um, detail, location details and information. We need to sort of work on this. You're not going to be answering every single question with every single location. That's not necessarily what you need to do. So who created the location? That can be very useful. You don't always have to have that, but it can be very useful to answer that question. If you look at the Dungeon Master Guide on page 100, um, you'll find ideas for creating your own. It's like, I would open up that book and have a look, and you'll find a whole lot of different ideas. And if they don't have anything that you like, then create your own. What is the purpose of the location? A very important question again. All locations have some sort of purpose. You just have to establish what it is. And I, again, you can look to, um, look to the Dungeon Master's Guide for Dungeons & Dragons 5e. On page 101, you'll find that there is a list of the purpose of a location right there. It should, it might obviously, it could be quite obvious and you don't need to look up anything. What is the history of the location? Um, why is the location important? And 
I would suggest I'm referring you again to the Dungeon Master's Guide on page 101, and you'll find that there is information on sort of doing that, the history of a location, um, and why that location is important. It sort of, it helps you, guide you in the right direction. Who inhabited the location? The general population of the location, like, I mean, who lives there? Are, is it full of goblins and orcs, or, or is it mostly made up of humans? It's just, uh, the place is a town, and it's just full of humans, and maybe the occasional dwarf. So, who inhabits, who, who inhabits the location and where, okay? And you can refer yourself back to the Dungeon Master's Guide on page 101 to 102. It gives you some advice on how to do that. Um, I would not say that's the best section in that book for doing that. I actually think it's pretty, it's not great. But I'm going to refer you to it anyway. Uh, position your hazards, your obstacles in the location is if it's appropriate. Not every location is going to have a hazard or an obstacle because it might not be that kind of location, right? If you're building a town or a city, it's not going to have that sort of thing necessarily. Um, include your traps, your puzzles, <clears throat> any natural hazards that would be appropriate. And you can refer yourself back to the Dungeon Master Guide again on page 102 to 105 and then uh, pages 296 to 298 for a lot of advice around that. I would say when it comes to traps... Um, the Dungeon Master Guide has some stuff. It's got about half of what you really need, okay? And then you're going to have to go and look at something like um, Xanathar's Guide to Everything, um, if I remember right. And then uh, with regards to something like Natural Hazards, it has most of your Natural Hazards in the Dungeon Master's Guide. Puzzles, you, you don't want to go to anything that Wizards of the Coast puts out. Um, even Tasha's, I feel their puzzles are useless. I would always recommend you to go and find a third-party um, source for your puzzles. If you can't create your own, I'm going to recommend my buddy Wally DM because his book is brilliant and um, you just can't go wrong with his stuff. I think they're far more useful to you if you have a group of people who like to interact with some sort of puzzle element uh, in a location. Okay, and then lastly, we need to dress this location we need to put some dressing in there there might be something on the walls or the ceiling um, there might be some sort of plant growing in this location or types of plants and trees uh, we're dealing with objects we're dealing with furniture we're adding in features to our location um, with aspects that can be interacted with and manipulated as i said before our location should be something we can manipulate in some way because um, remember we want to focus on exploration with our location and then I would gonna, I'm going to refer you again back to the Dungeon Master's Guide, pages uh, 298 to 301. And there is a whole bunch of stuff there. It's all charts and tables. And you just pick the things that you think will work best for your campaign. Yep. And then lastly, our miscellaneous recommendations. Uh, <coughs> so given the number of locations that I have made, and I have like uh, books full of locations where I've drawn maps that I've never used. <laughs> there, there's a few things you need to take into consideration when dealing with a location, okay? Uh, I've made so many mistakes with my locations and also made so many locations I never used. <laughs> and, and, and it's so true. So um, you don't have to be good at drawing a location map, okay? Because you're not trying to sell it. The map is for you and your group. Nobody else. Okay. If you're using a virtual tabletop. Maybe you might feel differently. Okay. Um, but again. I feel like the the quality of the map. That you draw by hand. Or you draw with software. Or you select. You know, It, it doesn't matter. So when you're drawing your own stuff. I would, I would encourage you to just draw your own stuff. It doesn't have to be good. It just has to get the idea across. It's not necessary to use or learn map drawing software. There are alternative methods. You do not need to learn or use map drawing software. There is a thing called a pen and a pencil and paper, and people have been doing it for years, and surprisingly, it still seems to work nowadays. Uh, now, I know if you're playing on a virtual tabletop, you might be feeling like, yeah, but I'm not sure that that's going to work in this case. You can draw on a virtual tabletop um, um, software 
just by hand, real rough and quick. Like this is what we used to do on our battle mats. We we would have a rough drawing of our map, uh, our map, that location, and we would just redraw it on the battle grid. And you can do the same thing on um, software if you're using a virtual tabletop. You don't need to get that fancy. We've had some very simple maps drawn up uh, by my dungeon master, who's dungeon mastering us right now, using that software, and he'll just do it right then and there. And it might be just a line drawing, and that's all you needed, nothing else. Okay. There are so many different maps that have been made for fantasy locations uh, that you can steal or borrow. Okay, so steal and borrow the existing maps. If you if you can't draw it yourself and you're feeling self self conscious and you feel like you need something that's a bit better, and you spot something that somebody else has made and you like it, then use it. You might as well. It, that's why it's there, as far as I'm concerned. If they put it up on the internet and they didn't have a um, a barrier for actually uh, purchasing it, so like if they didn't put like a dollar cost for actually downloading and getting it, then it's it's yours. That's the whole point of the internet. When you put it up on the internet, unless you put a barrier to entry, which is a pay cost, it's yours, as far as I'm concerned. Now, legally, <laughs> it's a different thing, but the reality is nobody's going to be chasing you or even know what you've been doing in terms of that. And the yeah, so just go use stuff, okay? If there's not a um, a barrier to to accessing it, just use that stuff if you can't do your own. So that covers pretty much all of the different things that you would need to know with regard to um, locations. Now, one of the locations I have picked, and, I, and you'll see it in the slide right now, is the pink terraces. This is a, a painting, a drawing that somebody's done, um, a piece of artwork, and I've selected it. I think it's one of the most amazing real-life locations in the world. And you're probably thinking, yeah, but what am I going to do with that in my adventure? The reality is, what can you not do with that? There are plenty of different ideas. I'm not going to give you ideas, but I'm going to show this. I just wanted to show you because this is a, a really good example of a fantastic real world location. It's not a building. It's not a structure. It's not a tomb. It's not a pyramid. It's it's part of nature, and it's kind of it's very unique. It stands out. It will it will probably sit in somebody's memory for a very long time. You just need, need to do a little bit more with it, and you're ready to go. <clears throat> So I'm hoping that this was useful to you in some way. I have been talking for a very long time. I am now aware that I didn't actually stop speaking and take a pause, and that's probably going to hurt me. But anyway, um, I hope that this was useful to uh, patrons and people who are watching my channel and watching this live stream, and that you'll be able to take it and use it for your own um, purposes. And hey, thank you for watching. Until next time, keep rolling those 20s. Okay, um, I'm switching over to my webcam. I will go through the um, the chat. Um, I'm going to also, let's just, God, I hope my eyes are strong enough to read all of this. Um, will I even be able to see the screen? I'm going to have to have glasses. I can see this today. <clears throat> so maybe what I should do is um, before I rip through here and go through the chat, uh, maybe I should actually have a drink of water and cover the town stuff now. So this is like the second part. I said I would talk about a specific location. So let's talk about a town. Can I just say that talking about a town and finding information on towns, I thought that would be easy. It's not. Okay, so <laughs> let's let's go to what I was going to discuss, which was actually the town. And if I can find my little, uh, there it is, we will switch over to that. <clears throat> just let, just get me, take a breather, I need to drink. Half an hour talking. All right, so here we go. Let's cover the town. I'll put this screen up. And we will um, go over a town. Now, I've tried to make this as simple as possible for you. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on it in terms of explaining stuff. I'm just going to give you what makes up a town because I figured that's what you were after in the first place. Okay, all of the other stuff, okay. No, what we're going to do is I'm going to take this and I'm going to consider this your ability to break down what you need to put in your town because I figured that was what you were after. So first off, 
most town layouts for medieval locations and for, say, a American Western style town, when I when you look on the internet, you will probably already know that it's almost impossible to find something useful. Like you are inundated by what I would consider a stream of tourism, and it's absolutely not authentic, and it's very annoying, and I struggled to find information, and I actually wound up sitting down with uh, William, who um, a friend who does watch the channel, and I talk to on Discord a lot, and actually AJ Pickett was there as well, and we were talking about locations and towns, and uh, but William was key for actually assisting me with this, um, and I really have to thank William for that. Because you can't go onto the internet, and you may have already discovered this, and find the sort of the standard layout of a town, I had to resort to borrowing somebody's brain who had a good understanding of history. Um, and if you do enough reading, you probably find a lot of this information. But here is how it works, as far as I can tell. This is a mix of both um, east and west, to many in many respects. Towns usually consist of a single road, You'll either have a single road that just passes through it, either going north to south or south to west, uh, no, no, um, east to west, south to north, east to west, yes. So a single road. Um, if you've been in any town or small place, you'll find that that generally tends to be the case. And we're dealing with probably small locations, like it's a town, okay? Even a village will tend to look a little bit like this. Or if you don't have a single road, there'll be a crossroads. So basically a road going from uh, north to south and then east to west and it, and it has a juncture that it crosses. And that's how most of your towns will um, consist um, of, that's their structure. And there will be a town green or village green somewhere, okay? And this is usually the location you select to hold something like a market. Because one of the things that uh, I was informed is that there's a specific thing, particularly in Europe, that designates what is a town legally and what is not a town legally. And I'm going to come back to that. And it does tie, connect, it is connected kind of to the um, the town green or the village green. Okay, not so much the village green because the village a village is different to a town, apparently. Okay, so um, things that you might want to include is a tavern, a saloon, a gambling hall. All of these are options. Um, a hotel, a motel, an inn, and I'm going to say brothel. If you've got that kind of game and you want to add a brothel in, fine. If you don't, just leave it off the list. Um, a train station, if you do have a train involved. Uh, a corral or stables, if you're dealing with horses or some sort of mounted um, animal or creature. Okay. A cemetery. Um, the Old West would refer to Boot Hill uh, or a funeral home. You don't have to have everything. These are just ideas for those of you. Take jot it, jot it down if you need to. Um, a marshal's office or a constable's office. This is where the law would hang out. A jailhouse would be another way. You could um, uh, put it down as being a jailhouse. And there may well also be a town hall is included, you know, included with the jailhouse. It may not be connected, but there was usually a place where everybody meets. Often the place of um, um, meeting in a small village or a town was the church. And that's where everybody would meet. Because uh, that's where everybody would 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 hang out. That was the socialization place. That's that's where you would go. Not necessarily the uh, the saloon. Uh, a general store, possibly a uh, and uh, and you're going to usually have some sort of general store. So when I say possibly, you're probably going to have at least one. Uh, a trading post, if you want to have a trading post, there you could have a grocery store. Uh, clothes stores, if you've got a, a larger town, you might have clothes stores. That doesn't mean that clothes can't be purchased from your town if you don't have one. They may be purchased by the general store or the trading post. Uh, and then you absolutely, for it to be designated in Europe by law, apparently, you need to have a marketplace. And that marketplace usually runs every day. Like, that's what your village green is for, okay? Or town green is for, is to hold the market. Now... Apparently, when it comes to a village, a village doesn't legally get called a town unless it has a charter to have a market formally. 
They might have markets going on, but to formally have that uh, and not um, annoy the authorities as such, you needed to have a charter. When a, a village or a town has a charter for a marketplace, then it's designated as a town. And apparently for it to be classified a city, you need to have a formal uh, temple. Now this might be just an overlarge church, but a temple. Apparently that's the designation legally, is you have a temple. If, if you want a city, you have to have a temple. <laughs> Who would have guessed? Uh, then you might add, add things like a bank might be a good thing to add, a mining exchange if you've got a mine next um, close by, a tax collector, you might actually have an office for the tax collector, um, the blacksmith or an armory, so somebody who actually makes armor or sells armor, um, a wheelwright would be quite common to have a wheelwright if you had wagons, um, the wheelwright might be the blacksmith and the blacksmith might also do the armory as well. So it's not like you need to have all three. You would probably have some sort of timber yard if there is timber being um, cut in the location and processed, so a place to actually purchase timber. Because remember, how do you build a building if you don't have timber? Yep. Uh, it, very common to have a grain mill, particularly if there's lots of farms everywhere. So a windmill that, that um, breaks down the grain. Now that's not collecting it, that's where it would go and get processed, is that windmill that would then grind up all that grain into, into flour. Um, and then of course you could also have a sawmill, all sort of encompassed in the same sort of concept. Um, churches, shrines and temples. So a shrine is usually very small, a church is a bit is certainly bigger and you, you, you've probably been to a church, you know what a church is. And a temple tends to be much bigger. Uh, a cathedral would be even larger again, yep. Then you've got your barber, your dentist, and your doctor. And if you're in the Old West, um, your barber would also be your dentist. So it's, and, and look, to be fair, some of these towns were quite small, so the barber might have been the dentist and the doctor. They might have done all three. Because when there wasn't somebody who needed to go and see the doctor or the dentist, then the barber would be doing um, here. That's sort of like, <laughs> A lot of these towns were so small, whether it be in the Old West or in Europe, that uh, whatever you were doing, you needed to do enough broad things to capture enough of a customer basis, otherwise you go out of business. So it actually makes sense to combine a lot of these things so they're doing more than one thing. So the bank might be the bank and the mining exchange and also where the tax collector is office is as well at the same time. Yep. And then lastly, a schoolhouse, because usually you would have a schoolhouse somewhere for the children to, to learn stuff. Unless, of course, everybody in your world is um, illiterate and doesn't go to school and they're doing other things. So that kind of covers everything you need in terms of the layout of your town, the actual location. I'm not going to give you anything more because I feel like that's enough. That will get the location done. All right, okay, so we've covered our location. Now that you've taken some notes, I'm gonna go back to our chat and we're gonna have a discussion. Um, now I was trying to think, oh, that's right, I can't actually see, I need my glasses. Where did I put my glasses? Sorry, people, let me just give you this. I'll give you this back. Keep looking at that and I'll go grab my glasses. I know where they are. Okay, I'm getting into position now, and let us go back to, no, that's the wrong screen. We need that screen. <clears throat> I'm obviously going to be looking at um, the poll, because that will determine how we do things today. Did you, uh, did you think that I, I put that poll up just for the sake of putting that poll up? <laughs> no, no, there's actually a purpose. So um, we'll make sure we do that. Put that over there, out of the way, and we'll have a look at chat, so that I know which one we're going to do. Um, I've got a pretty good idea what we're, what people were probably going to say, um, so I am mostly prepared. 
yeah, I'm mostly prepared. Okay, let's have a look at chat, see if my eyes are going to work for today. <clears throat> That's better. Okay, so my glasses are acquired for today. So, let's have a look at our poll first, and then we'll go through the chat, and then we're going to make a, uh, a town. Okay, uh, so what do people prefer? How do you prefer to create location maps for your role-playing games? Pencil and paper, okay. Map software, uh, so pencil and paper was 53%, so quite a lot of you are drawing everything, okay. Map software, 24% out of 17 people. Uh, Pre-made maps, 12%, and no preference is 12%. Okay, good, I'm going to leave that up for now. Uh, but we will actually start um, um, going through the chat very quickly. Um, I will say right now, like these classes, the best way to support these classes continuing, so I come back and continue talking about locations, because I haven't actually said it, but I'm going to say it now. Um, supporting these on Patreon is my preference, because you will get everything that we discuss here on Patreon as a document. In some cases, it'll be a PDF, and sometimes it'll be a Word document that you can edit, okay? Or, or it'll be a map or an image or something like that. But I would much prefer you to support me on Patreon. But another good way of doing so, I'm um, doing so, is to support me through super chats and super stickers. And if um, Agile Monk is here today, please don't super chat or super sticker me. You've been doing a lot recently, and I do appreciate it. But you, you, you've you've given me enough, okay? Um, so. That's another way to actually support, make sure that I keep doing this, so that we come back round and talk about locations again, because all the locations that I mentioned in my presentation, I have a layout for. That means we will eventually, in the future, not just cover towns, we will cover towns, tombs, or crypts, um, we'll cover mines, we're going to cover the likes of your um, sailing ship, we're going to cover the pyramid, we're going to cover all of the generic stuff that you would normally require and we'll build at that location and then you can use it. Um, and I'll, I'll give you a breakdown of every area and what that area is for, okay? With the town, I don't need to give you an, a breakdown of what every area was for because the name of the place is pretty obvious what it does, yep. But that also includes that Volo's Guide to Everything has some sort of isometric three-dimensional drawings of different monster layers. And so that means that those of you who are here or through a poll may be able to influence the next area that we look at. Like if that's what we want the next time we roll around to talking about locations, then we can I can actually put together the material to talk about that location and then draw it and then make it available for those of you who are on Patreon. Or those of you who are on, to, on Patreon, you'll know how to do it yourself because we'll actually show you. Okay? So it seems to me we were going to be drawing a map today for sure. So every time I come back through to do locations, we'll cover a new location. It won't just be the town every single time. All right. Um, I said hi to um, Gabby. Uh, Shiner, 81. Hello. Uh, Pale Rider, how's it going? Yeah, a town where, yeah, yes, absolutely, where rats leave gold coins. Hello, big kid. Um. <laughs> yeah, I know I know you and your um, terrain bits. Sure. Hi, Mike Hall. How's it going? Inspiration equals stealing from other media. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Steal. Steal and borrow. Uh, how do you take inspiration from other cultures uh, Then you're than yours without being um, disrespectful. Uh, so, so Gabby, um, so he, here's, here's something to be, we're, we're venturing down a hole which um, I just don't take part in. Um, the world has gone mad, okay? Uh, so my own culture, which is in Europe, like England and Wales and um, Ireland and apparently Spain, I don't get pissed off when somebody takes the, the, the concepts that are there and then utilizes them somewhere else. I couldn't give a rat's ass. Why does somebody else need to be um, I'm worried about that sort of thing? Okay, so with regard to being respectful to somebody else's culture, what? The, the best way is to not use it? 
Now, I've done so many courses on um, cultural sensitivity and, and my, uh, for, my, for my job, like, it, like a lot. And the one thing that I have been told many times is the best thing you can do is learn how to pronounce their name, understand what you can of what's going on for them, and accept that you will offend them at some point. Okay, <clears throat> but I, I just I do not I do not um, I do not sign on to the uh, like you know it's like everybody's terrified of doing anything. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> it you it's your game and a fantasy world that's unrelated to the world. You know, it is not like you're taking somebody else's culture and turning it into a theme park and then selling tickets to it. Um, so yeah. Anyway, moving on. Um, <laughs> uh, Derry, how's it going? Lairs in real life often have a, a problem. The animal will literally crap itself out of <laughs> out of the home. Yeah, so when you... <laughs> this is one of the things that you probably do need to actually do is break up your monster lair. Otherwise, it's not going to stay there very long. If monsters don't have place, um, place, um, place value in trophies or treasures or random pile of poop, <laughs> I know exactly what you're talking about. Um, so we, we can we can break down a layer um, into different locations so that it can actually live there for more than more than one week. <laughs> um, I'm always I am always disappointed when I try to explore natural caves and they don't turn out to be um, five room dungeons. That's because natural caves don't work that way. They're actually very, very simple. They are eroded by the environment. So you, you, you have to accept that when you build a cave, it's going to be super simple. Like it's not going to be great huge exploration ex um, uh, event. Um, not unless you're dealing with the, the bunkers for um, uh, around uh, your, your town or city in a time of war, like that have no longer been used. Like here in the North Head in Auckland, uh, New Zealand, uh, there's bunkers everywhere, and you can go through in summer, unless of course it's been locked off and it's too dangerous, but generally you can go through the bunker areas and it's like exploring a, a new world. It's pitch black, you need a torch, um, but real caves don't work like that. Yeah, exactly. Um, right, so moving on. Ta -da -da. Spelunking. So lo a lot of caves that are sort of quite complicated actually wind up being very difficult to navigate. You can't actually move them through them very easily. Aztecs used um, pyramids. Yes, they did for ritualistic suicide. There, look, an Aztec pyramid was actually very simple in its structure. Um, there's not a lot of interior cavities, if anything. There's usually, usually the, if I remember right, it's only the top chamber, and that's it. Um, there's not much else, if, if that, but usually there was just a top chamber. Uh, are all for burial purposes. Yes, they tend to be, not always, but they, they can be. Uh, the ziggurat, <laughs> maybe, maybe it could be, yes, somebody else might have built it. Um, but if we're talking about real stuff. Astrology, yes, uh, yes, I think you're probably right um, there, um, Gabriel, that uh, astrology, uh, particularly on a, a ziggurat or a pyramid that's got a flat top, yeah. Yes, the pink terraces were buried by a, um, volcanic ash, yeah. Never mind, I guess it happens, things change. Uh, um, so we're representative of dirties, uh, mountains, what? Mountains, dun, 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 mains, various ceremonies. I'm not, I'm not sure what that means, big kid. I'm, you lost me. Laptop wall, wallpapers, uh, natural environments make great inspiration for locations. Yes, they can. Yep. Yeah, a lot of the photographic stuff on the internet is pretty impressive. Um, so pyramids can be way more um, complex. This is why I have a layout for a pyramid, but it's a, an Egyptian pyramid, um, and we could cover different pyramids, but that really depends on what people want to do. I feel the Egyptian pyramid was is probably we know more about them than anything else. Question. Okay, Mike, what do you got here? 
Any thoughts on wild magic or anti-magic zones? Well, I think that the wild magic sorcerer should be able to roll on the chart every time they cast a spell that isn't a cantrip, uh, in my opinion. No rolling dice to see if they roll on the chart, they just roll on it every time they cast a spell of level 1 or up. I don't know if that answers your question. I like wild magic, I think it's cool. I think it's fun. It's crazy. It causes trouble. And it also saves lives. That's what happened to my group. As for anti-magic zones, um, well that's up to you. If you want to have anti-magic zones, it would make sense to have an anti-magic zone in a, a bank. Otherwise somebody's going to just cast invisibility on themselves and go and rob the bank. <laughs> you know what I mean? So yeah, include magic um, uh, anti-magic zones. Yeah, yeah, big kid, you just add what you need to. Um unrealistically beautiful scenery but yes so it's fantasy like your environment is for you and your group you can do whatever you like with it and i think you yeah, i think people need to just like you know just make what it is you want to make um i always take a town center for commerce and market uh, administration temples and a, uh, a park or fountain yes you can put a park or fountain the park was often the um, the 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 town green anyway like and there might have been a fountain there or there might not have been one um branching out so you have to decide like how complicated your your town is so if we take the old tombstone um the old western tombstone that was quite a big town like that's probably you know unusual in size for what it was um as an example for sure Hi, hi, Steve um, Zurich. Steve Zurich is a patron, for those of you who don't know. And thank you, Steve. Hopefully this was um, what you were expecting I was going to pump out. It will be obviously changing and morphing over time, and we will talk about different locations. Many of these places would be um, community-used, right? Yeah, absolutely. A lot of the things would be um, trade services for goods as such. Absolutely. Yeah. Right, so um, I need to get to the bottom of this because we actually have to build a town today and I don't want to lose too much time and I want to get it done and I want to try to do it in two different um, uh, methods. I want to use uh, pencil and paper and pen and I also want to use um, software if I can. We'll see if we get both done. Um, Derry, um, mud hat huts, yep, yep. A hundred and, yeah, 1,600 years old. They last a long time, 11 stories high. Uh, Yemen, yeah, I agree. A lot of the older, look, a lot of the building structures from the past survived longer than our stuff will ever survive. Like, when somebody thinks, oh, what did they make back in um, 1900 up to 2000? And they won't be, and, and, and 2001. They're like, oh, oh, <laughs> it's like, oh, 2021. They're like, Nothing survived. There's no existing buildings. They everything fell apart. Their concrete was useless. Their building um, materials were awful, and uh, none of their stuff lasted beyond uh, a short period of time. Uh, even though apparently they used a whole lot of stuff that was not biodegradable, like it'll all just disappear. So yeah, um, even the ancient times are not all people were um, literate. But uh, yeah. Um, vast majority were uh, I mean different you've got to understand different levels of literacy like you know literacy falls into many different brackets not just reading and writing um, the Dallas is it the Dallas Dallas pen paper for creation um, map maker for uh, final product okay so you use both not sure the banks and the schoolhouse are appropriate for medieval Esquire no they are um, old west yeah no Mike they are um, there were always there were always schoolhouses even in medieval times. You would have that, and you would have banks. Um, they won't necessarily be a particularly large bank, okay? But you would still have a banking system of some kind. There had to be somebody who had a safe. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> because otherwise you'd get robbed all the time. So those sorts of things did in fact exist. That's why I've marked them down. Um, very diluted. <laughs> okay. Tough to say with culture, but I think um, if you're being um, genuine, then you're probably good to go. Like, no, 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 okay, yeah. Uh, hi, Fender, how's it going? Hello, Fred, I'm back supporting you on the, I'm back on Patreon. Ah, I, I, have I seen the email? Has it come through just recently? I, I have, I, I've been really busy this morning. 
I am able to catch your streams again. Well, you're not only going to get uh, my streams and many of them, you're going to get bombarded in your email very shortly, um, probably in the next few days, depending on how well I do. Um, I'm, I'm not sure how I'm supposed to get everything done, but it's going to happen very shortly. You're going to wind up with way too much stuff on Patreon. I'm going to feel like an idiot. Um, <laughs> people might even leave because they're getting too many things. Um, the intention was never to actually du run Dungeon Master preparation four times a week. It was only ever supposed to be one time a week. But I want to establish which day is the best because I think it's probably going to be the most useful to people. And uh, in my opinion, um, I've found that ultimately people who are Dungeon Masters are much more likely to support something than somebody who's a player. I've seen many streams where they've got 150 people there and nobody supports them with nothing. They just show up and watch and talk, and that is it. Um, so uh, that's why I'm, I'm, I've moved to, I need to pre pre provide you with tools and a bit more stuff that you can actually use. So that's why we're making so many things. Can't wait to glimpse at all the notes. Yeah, they're, they're coming. Uh, Steve, I have been enjoying uh, this kind of thing. Um, I need to watch more of them. Just uh, been distracted by other stuff. Steve, I know you're really busy. We're, well, with support, I'm glad you feel that way. What about um, wild magic zones, places where any magic cast and play? Absolutely, stick that in. Yeah, do that. Like, that would be cool. Okay, people. I got to the bottom of the chat. And um, we have to got some work to do. So I have to do a hide myself for a second and um, adjust things, which I will do. So I'm going to put you back with this screen. You need to start writing some notes. We need the name of a town. We've got to answer a few questions, which we will probably need to. Actually, we should probably answer those questions now. Um, actually, I, what I want to do is, do I want to do that? Let's, let's get the town name first while I, before I start drawing. And let's get, um, let's get something like some locations we want to add. Like, those are the key things we need to consider, right? Is we want a few things that help us actually put it together. So we need a town name. What's it going to be called? Um, and we need a couple of questions answered. Uh, sorry about that. Um, watching and talking is good, but the cherry on the top keeps the um, engine running is actually <laughs> sending something, some bit of support on a regular. Yeah, it actually is. It, it does make a big difference. A game that um, includes Wild Magic Sorcerer. I love the idea of Wild Magic Zones um, that auto trigger surge. Oh, cool. Like that idea. Riverdale in the background is um, the year. Yeah. Okay. So <laughs> you're correct. Um, Vico Rex there yeah you're right that's um, Rivendale um, so we need a the name of a town Crocodile Lizard <laughs> really <laughs> um, <laughs> that's yeah we're not going to call the town Crocodile Lizard that, that, that's not going to happen Stop, stop playing with me. <laughs> you guys are shocking sometimes. So, so the name of the town, who created it? So we need the name of somebody who created it. We don't necessarily have to have that, but it would be nice. Okay. Who created the town? These are questions. Um, the history, I don't think we need to do the whole history. So if you have one line or one idea, we can do that. Um, history of... That's good, but we need that. But I want names, so start spitting out some names, people. Who inhabits the location? Okay. And uh, we're, we, we've got to make sure I actually get this done a bit faster so we actually finish everything today. Um, and we're it's a town, so we're not going to be dealing with hazards and obstacles, so we don't need to worry about any of that. And interaction, well, it should be actually pretty much spelled out. We know exactly how that's going to work. So, <coughs> Croco Lizard. No, I'm not going to call the town. Like, so, okay, some names, please, people. Some names of a town. Otherwise, 
I'm going to have to rev- um, revert to, to pulling out a book and, and making one up myself. <clears throat> the, the, only, the only way I'm going to call a town um, Croco Lizard is if somebody super chats, and then I would do it. But here's some good names. Okay, I'm going to write down these names. Um, Sir Ultra, 99 years ago. Sir Ultra? Sir Ultra? You've got to be kidding me. All right, but I'll take the name. The name is all right, sort of. Ultraville. At least it's not called Helensville. That's where I live. Okay, so we've got Ultraville. Uh, We've got another name here. That's name one, name two. Um, the Dalis, uh, what do we got here? Mirror, Mirren Stone. Is that Mirren Stone? Yeah, it is. So it's another name. We could use that one. Uh, Lortain. Okay. Lortain. Um, Crackpot Creek. Spirit Wolf, one, 1966. Um, can I just say that I know that sounds terrible, but I actually like that. Um, <laughs> I really like that. That's actually quite, quite cool. So let's put that down as a crackpot. Is that Crockpot Creek? It is. That means we have to have a creek beside it. Or did the creek dry up? Who knows? Uh, five. Uh, Varus. Varsius, um, Irwood, okay, oh god, we got a lot here, um, oh, now, I, now I feel like we're going to have, oh, do I have to actually put this onto a document, you guys are going um, pretty fast here, so let's just see if I can actually keep up with all of that, so this is, um, name of town, okay, I think we've got enough town names, who created the town, okay, I think that's, I don't really need to worry too much about the history of the location and the inhabitants because I feel like you guys will do that. But, um, the, my gosh, all right, so let's just move myself back a little bit. Um, Ultraville. Uh, there is a, there's a lot of names there. Let's just get this sorted. Bold underline and now you can't see what I'm doing. I know that's that's uh, that's what I'm I'm doing that quite deliberately. Um, okay, uh, I'm just typing Tom Hanks. No way, Jay Lauren. <laughs> You've got to be kidding. I'm not putting Tom Hanks in there. <laughs> Marin Stone. Um, what, um uh, croc, croc pot creek um yes 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 um now back to the names where were we ah oh, okay uh airwood airwood's good At least it's not earwig. <laughs> um, Datan. Datan? Datan. 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 And I think the last name. So, yeah, names of who who actually. Um, Hanks Folly. Hanks Folly and Burrowsville. Burrowsville, I'm going to take that as well. And the last name of um, town is Hank's Folly, um, which probably suggests that Hank is actually Hank's Folly. Okay. Right. So we've got that. So uh, who created the town? Uh, town. <coughs> right, so uh, we need some names. Uh, what have we got? James Curtin. 
Really? Firadin. Firadin. Stony Croft. <laughs> we, we've got a few names here, I can see. Um, Seth the Wise. You auntie ab abomination there. <laughs> Warlord who, who, was the, who built the town to live uh, in the twilight days. Really? <laughs> Seth the Wise. <laughs> okay. All right. Is it Seth or Seth? Seth. Seth. I think it's Seth, isn't it? I think you put down the Seth. Oh, no. It's Seth. It's Seth. It's not Seth. 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 The Wise. Uh, <laughs> uh, dear. Uh, you guys are funny. You really are. You obviously, like, I suppose, I suppose, I, do I need to, I, okay, I'll start up my phone. We will switch over so you can actually see what I'm typing up, um, since it'll probably wind up going to the patrons anyway. <laughs> so and, and we will pull, we'll pull the stuff and put it over there. Um, the near, the nearby shrine at Crackpot Spring. Okay. <laughs> uh, dear. Some of these could be names of townsfolk or yeah, or rivers. Yeah, found by um, Henan Burrow. Okay, Spirit Wolf Henan Burrow. Okay, I'll put that down as a name. Whoops, did I just balls that up a little bit? I did. Let's just undo that bit, and then just hit this here. Okay. Um. <laughs> Uh, okay, so uh, let me just make sure that I got my phone doing what it needs to do. Come on, you. And I will switch over so that you can see what I'm doing. If it ever ever starts up. Um, and then, of course, we're going to draw this, and we need to draw it in the next few minutes. Uh, and we also need to determine locations, like what locations. So um, we've still got names of who creating the place, so that's good. <clears throat> creating locations come on people let's see if we can get this to go <clears throat> all right so i'm going to probably need a um a lozenger if you hear me sounding a bit weird i'm working now i'm working i'm working for <laughs> i'm working for you <laughs> here we go to stop that. Let me let me get in here. Okay. All right. So I've got the chat up here. Let me just catch up on the computer. Um, uh, I'm going to leave that one. Okay. Some of these could be names of towns, folk, and rivers. Yes. Found by now Hanham Burrow. That was a name that we had here, so Hanham. Hanham. Burrow. Um, James Curtin. <laughs> uh, this is not what if. Um, for Adana. Okay, I think I got that's what you said. And um, oh, did I did I lose track? Have you guys gone? Oh, you guys have gone bananas on me. Oh, you're way down here now. Stony Croft. I I like Stony Croft. <laughs> he tried to huge destroy the universe. Stony Croft and Randalver. Randalver. Randalver, Stony Croft. <clears throat> Did I get that right? Teen. All right, I'm trying to catch, catch up with you. You guys are working very fast here, <clears throat> faster than I am. 
Tony Croft. Uh, Mont. Chris. Hello, Chris. Montalivu. Cool. Um, maybe. I th I think we need to stop on the names. I think we had enough. We've got enough names. Um, otherwise, otherwise, we're going to get completely out of, out of hand here. Uh, you guys are adding all your own stuff, which is fine. So, since I want this to be something that you can just cannibalize yourself, shadow fording. Yeah, I think we've got enough names. We, we've 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 named enough. We're 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 done with the naming. Okay. <laughs> Um, so, so let's, let's actually, let's actually transition <clears throat> from the, me looking at the computer here to the other screen, uh, which I need to now move my microphone, but I've got to draw now. Thank God I can draw reasonably fast. <clears throat> the sound is going to change people. Don't freak out. I have to put a big, I've got a great huge piece of paper here. I have to put out in front of me. And then I have to <clears throat> adjust this. Um, I should be hiding what I'm up to, shouldn't I? Let me let me hide. <clears throat> it's supposed to be movie magic. My movie magic's not very good. Like, <laughs> let, let's 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 give you this. Remember the locations. You need to start typing down what locations we need to put in the town. Okay, this is not an, um, the entire list that I have. <clears throat> but this is the list that I want you to start thinking about because we're going to use that. Right, okay, let's see if I can actually get this to point in the right direction. That didn't work very well. Uh, the light's in the way. Let's move that a little bit more. <clears throat> okay, that doesn't look too bad. Uh, looks like I'm on my page. <clears throat> I'll put my phone over here. Take my glasses off because I can't actually see the um, the chat while I'm doing that. Stonycroft worship. Um, um, they worship a giant st stone statue. It animates in, into some kind of golem and attacks to defend the uh, town if needed. I really like that. That's actually very, very clever. So <clears throat> let's transition over. You should hopefully have, from my screen that I showed you, you should have had some ideas. This is uh, essentially my piece of paper that I'll be working on for today. We have um, some big black markers so that I can actually make things look like you can see it on the screen very shortly. <clears throat> And um, we, we're actually going to give it a name. And I, I really liked um, Crackpot Creek. I actually thought that was actually very, very clever. So uh, now this is all upside down. I wonder if I can flip my, my screen the other way up for you. I believe there is supposed to be a transition, transformation section. Transformation, I can turn it 180 degrees. Bam. Yep. That worked. <laughs> uh, let's do that. No, no. Nah, that's just that's, that's just going to have to be it. I'm, I'm slightly off to the side. Can I move this a bit more? Yeah, there you go. Okay. You can kind of see what I'm doing now. Um, well, I, I I don't think we we. I mean, if you really want to have a crypt in here, um, we could. But I I think um, a graveyard is probably a a better idea in my opinion, but I'll mark down graveyard as a possibility because a crypt is usually just like one person has been buried, do you know what I mean? Whereas a graveyard is usually many or a cemetery. So it doesn't have to be a graveyard, it could be called a cemetery if you wanted, <clears throat> but I'll mark it down. <clears throat> Hello Chris, how's it going? A statue. So we need to have a statue. Uh, what I need to know is, are we going to use a, um, a lot, one single road, or are we using a crossroads for our um, town? That's kind of important to know. <clears throat> for those of you who are like, oh, what does he mean? Like, seriously, all I mean is, do we go with the cross or do we not? So, um, do I need to put up a poll to ask that question? Is this, is this where we need to be? 
So I've marked down statue. We need to have a, a green, so a town green or park. That has to be there. That's where our market is going to be. So you can call it a green, you can call it a park, but there needs to be somewhere where the market will be. Remember, town, there is always a market. So crossroads, crossroads, thank you, um, Gabriel. Um, who else has got crossroads? Shiner, 81, crossroads. Um, hey, Fred, how's it going? Thinder, is it, is it Thinder 80 or Thinder 8? Hey, Fred, maybe this um, there is a, uh, a sewer with a poo golem. You, <laughs> you have tickled my fancy. But I feel like um, a sewer refers to a city. Um, I don't think a town is likely to have that. They're going to just throw it out the window. Okay. Crossroads, another one. Okay, it looks like it's crossroads. So let's. I'm going to start with pencil. You may or may not be able to see what it is. We're not going to get too fancy. Okay, but we'll do a crossroads. And I think what we'll do is... I feel like you guys are aiming for a um, a statue in the center, right? I get the feeling this is where we're heading. So we'll put in a, a place for the statue. Rough drawing, people. All right. So we've got to put in some stuff um, along here and there and um, we'll make our road relatively wide. It's probably going to be dirt or um, stone. It's not going to be anything too fancy. Correct. Multiple roads into a town provide more opportunities um, for the DM to expand the uh, campaign travels elsewhere. No, no. The, the reality is just because you've got a single road doesn't mean you can't go in four different directions or multiple directions. There would be other roads that would come off it. it just, it's just that the central town itself would have a single road. But we've got, a, we've got multiples here. We're going to be putting a statue in the center. I think that's what we wanted to have. Um, so I need you to start uh, giving me some ideas of locations that we need to include in this location uh, on this map. Okay. So what are we going to put in here? I showed you a whole lot of different ideas. So I now need you to actually give me some some stuff on that. Um, Now, it's it's a it's a cheap pencil. I'm going to be using the black marker to mark everything in anyway. You can't see anything. That's all right. That's because you're not supposed to just yet. I'll mark it in um, dark. Do you want me to dark? Do you want me to mark in the road right now? I'll mark in the road right now. How's that? Do you feel better? I'll do. I'll put the road in <laughs> the road in now. So we'll just do there. Statue. Come on, people! I've got. To, I've got. I need some locations for this. You, you should be able to see. I put in a crossroad. We need some different things. We need some shops and some locations for our town. Okay. Uh, bound mine used as a crypt. Um, about a mine used as a crypt. We're building a town today. We're not building crypt or a mine. <laughs> Spirit wolf. We're we're building a town. I need the names. So what sort of places do we want here? Do we want a general store here? If we're going to have a general store, give me a name, Shiner. I'm I'm all for. Let's have a general store. But what we need with that is we need the name of the general store. So throw out the name of the general store as well. If we're going to have a church, um, it, do we have a, a particular church name for it? Um, so church. We just don't have a name for the church. It doesn't have to be long-winded. It doesn't need to be too fancy. Um, we know what the place is called, right? For those of you who are like, oh, what's the name of this place? I'll just put it over here. This is our rough drawing. If we have time, we'll put it into a piece of software. <coughs> Pardon me. Oh, I'm full of gas. Um, poultry, a library, a bookstore. 
Really? You want that? Okay. Um, what's that creek powdered flour mill? Is that a thing? I uh, love the potential to explore the clouds of um, clouds of flour. You, the place would blow up too. Um, okay, I'll write that down. Uh, creek powdered flour mill. I've written this down. I have. We've got. I just need some some names, and then we will start positioning stuff. Um, Fendar's idea. Oh, okay. We'll come back to you. Uh, what's this? A tree that grows um, rejuvenating logs, ideal for <laughs> the firewood lengths. <laughs> uh, dear, do you really you want to add in a tree that does that? <laughs> um, a library and a book, a bookstore. So a library that is also a bookstore. Library. They often did that, didn't they? They were combined. Uh, we might need the name of a bookstore. But then again, if we don't have names for places and we just need the things that we're going to put here, you guys can put the names on yourself. Do you know what I mean? Which may actually be more useful to you. So different locations. So we need a few other things. We've got general store. Um, Fen does idea. It must be a masonry, maybe the uh, the ones that um, sculpted the statue. Oh, okay, mason. Masonry, okay. Masonry shop. Is it going to be a shop? Um, a hospital? With where, Tiger <laughs> Doctor, who was born <laughs> a lycanthrope, who has the uh, responsibility of taking care of, uh, let's say, um, problematic people <laughs> yeah. oh my gosh All right so Gatsby's um Gugaths really <laughs> Gatsby's Gugaths Gugaths <laughs> ah dear you're funny. Um, I'm looking, I'm looking. Jesse. Hello, Jesse. How's it going? You want back everything that was stolen? What was stolen? <laughs> All right, so you've got a name for the library. Uh, tell Hearts. Tails, right? Got it. Good. Crockpot Creek has a um, has a, a a crock. Really, edge old monk. Really? Come on, come on. Right. <laughs> so we're twenty minutes uh, into our, our hour worth of um, work that we need to get done. Let's have a look seriously at uh, the locations that we need to establish. Are we going to have a tavern or an inn? Um, so, or are we going to have a tavern, a saloon, or a gambling hall? Like, thank you, Agile Monk, for the super um, sticker. You don't need to keep super stickering me. I do appreciate it, but thank you very much again. Agile Monk is a patron, and he's been throwing money at me big time recently. Come on, people. I need to start drawing this stuff in. So, are we going to have a tavern, a saloon, or a gambling hall? Um, or is it going to be a combined tavern and inn? Okay, or tavern and or, or a pub. We could even have a pub if you really want, if you prefer the word pub. But we need to have an idea of are those things going to be there? Are we going to have an inn, um, a hotel or a motel? Um, I'm not going to put a brothel in. So even if you mention it, I'm not going to put it in. <laughs> okay. Uh, Mason is the um, is is the lord. Um, small masonry works um, attached. Um, I just need the name of a mason um, shop, basically. I, I, we don't need to build in the, the, all that information. We just need what the location is and the name of the location for now. Okay. 
uh, were the um, the Weir Tiger. You want the hospital to be a Weir Tiger. Hospital. I'm going to think about that, Gibby. I'll think about that. <laughs> I I am I am still on very much on the fence. I'm almost off the fence actually, but I'm, I'll, I'm writing it down on a piece of paper. Um, so, we need a name for the masonry shop. We need to know if we're going to have a tavern, a pub, um, a tap house, something like that. Because I've got to start drawing the stuff in, people. Otherwise, we're not going to get it very far. I'm going to have a drink of water while you guys are thinking. Oh, Marco's is the pub. Thank you very much. Good. So, we're going to have a pub. Uh, Crocs Pots. What's Crocs Pots? What's Crocs Pots supposed to be for? So the pub is called Marcos. Okay, try not to. I almost wrote the wrote down the wrong thing there. You, you, it's a good thing you can't see what I'm writing down. Crocs Pox, uh, Marcos. Okay. <laughs> All right. So we've got a pub. Do we have an inn? Because often with uh, you know fantasy stuff, we have inns. It's called Crocs Pots. Okay. That's actually that actually is pretty good. Um, the Dallas, nice. Is it Dallas? Dallas, yes. Yeah, I'll put that down. Crocs, pots. Right, got that. Okay, what else have we got here? Uh, we need to have. Do we need? Do we have an inn? Um, are we putting an inn or a motel or a hotel in here or not? What's it going to be called? So while you're thinking about uh, whether we have a hotel, motel, or inn, um, you need to decide: Do we have a corral or stables, like somewhere for horses? Do you want to? Do you want it to have a train station? Maybe it's not going to be suit or suitable to put a train. Let's take take train station off off the cards for now, primarily because you're probably not going to have that many people who can use the town if there's a train station. It'll be too different to what they're used to. It's probably not going to be generic enough. So let's go with a corral or a stables. I need the name of a corral or stables. Let's have that. We'll include the, the two together. There's a corral and a stables. So what's it going to be called? So we need a name for that little sucker. Um, a cultural house where they have the, ho um, the holy days. A cultural house? <laughs> ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I don't think so. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> uh, dear. Um, okay. So we've got some names. Or do I need to revert to actually um, making the stuff up myself? What's the hot chip? What's the hot chip going to be? Like, <laughs> I mean, I mean what, what is the hot chip? The three and a half horse inn. Nice. Nice. Uh, how about we just call it the three and a half horses? And a half. Horses. <laughs> um, the dwarf lord stables his ponies there. Don't joke about it. I am trying not to laugh. Um, it's pretty funny though, but um, the the inn the inn name is very good. I, I like it. The stables are called the Good Neighbors. Really, Fender? The Good Neighbors? Hot hoof, like a um, a horse hoof. Ah, uh, okay. Horse hoof. Who horse hoof? Horse hoof. Um, are we go look the horse hoof? Is that our stables, or are we going with the Good Neighbors? What's the word for um, shaping stone? Um, chip? Uh, I, I suppose you can still cut. You, you can still carve stone. Um, good name for a church. Yeah, and I'm not sure where, where that goes. Um, let's go with the... Look, I actually... Thinda 8. I think the, the horse hoof is actually a pretty good name for a corral and stables. The three and a half horses, I'm in. Yeah. <laughs> All right. 
I'm going to take down the uh, your name. The the horse hoof is actually fine because it actually kind of fits, doesn't it? So we've got that. So we've got quite a few locations we've got to try to squeeze into here. That's going to be interesting. Okay, so uh, I've got that. I've got that. People are still trying to figure out the name of the church. If we can get the church in there, that might be interesting. Um, and then positioning is going to be interesting too. So let's go to my notes. Where else? What else do we absolutely need to have? Are we going to have a jailhouse? I think we need to have a jailhouse at least, or a constable, or a marshal. What would they be called? And um, we don't have anything like that yet. So you let me know whether you want it to be a jailhouse, a constable, or a marshal. We've got our general store, and we've got a name for that. Um, we we probably absolutely need to have a blacksmith because it's just too hard not to think that there wouldn't be a blacksmith. So I'm going to put down a blacksmith, okay? And you're going to give me a name for that blacksmith. Come on, I've got to start drawing out squares shortly and putting in buildings. <laughs> Holy Church of the Great Lord of Our Lady. Um... Okay, so your church, the Holy Church, of it's a very long name. So let's take what you've taken. Um, how about we call it the Great Lady? I think that's, that's actually not bad. Or is it going to be, yeah, well, let's start with the Great Lady. I think, like, I get where you're going with this. Um... Dave the Blacksmith, Wing Walker 007, I like the name, but I'm not calling it um, Dave the Blacksmith. I, <laughs> we, we gotta, we gotta, we gotta expand our horizons just a little bit more. <laughs> uh, Rumples Ford, he is the uh, the dwarf. Okay, all right, I, I can, I can, I can kind of deal with that. Our Lady of Sorrow, Lady of Sorrows, Jen Paul, one of my, one of my mates is now in here. Hello, G, JP, uh, Lady of Sorrows. Okay, we'll call it the Lady of Sorrows. Um, and I'll get rid of Great. Although it's tempting to go Great Lady of Sorrows, it's very long. David, no, no, that is not gonna put, not putting it in. Are <laughs> oh, you gotta be kidding? Med Medlar's exceptional apocryphy. Oh my god! What is that supposed to be? <laughs> what is? <laughs> You've got to be kidding me! Oh <laughs> dear. Oh dear, you guys are funny. Um, I, I, I'll put down Medlars. Uh, I'm assuming. I'm assuming. What is? What is it supposed to be? What are we trying to do here, um, Joel Monk? What exactly is? What is your point? Where are we getting you with this? <laughs> um, okay, fourteen. So we're going to have way too many locations if we don't eventually stop. So. Um, so we, we've got to have something that, that brings us to, to an end somewhere along the line. I'm still looking for, I'll put down um, Medlars for the uh, the black, oh no, oh no, the blacksmith is um, Rumples Ford. Is it Rumples Ford? So, Okay, all right, all right, okay, I'm putting Midlars, good lord. <laughs> um, where, where, where was I? I was, I was, <laughs> I was overshot uh, by, by too many ideas, followed by some, some wacky ones, and... Forward. Yep, okay, I got it. 
I think I think you 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 sold me. I've put down Medlar's apothecary. I've done it. Okay, it's happened. <laughs> and next on our many different things that we need to cover. Um, do we want a barber, dentist, or doctor? I think we can do both. So the barber would act as the dentist and doctor. So I think we can do all of that together. All right. All actually, the Medlar's apothecary will probably cover all of that anyway. So forget about that. We're all good. I've look. I've took, I'll put down Rumples Ford. I have put down Rumples Ford. It's right beside the blunt and blacksmith. You you've got it. No, look, we're going to spell it the way it's pronounced. <laughs> you guys, most of you are Americans. <laughs> You're not even from New Zealand. We're just going to do it that way. It's going to be a lot easier. Uh, okay, so I think we have most of what we needed. Um, did I have a jailhouse? I didn't have a jailhouse or a constable. And that's usually going to be there somewhere. Yep. So come on, people. We need the name of a jailhouse. Um, or we just call it jailhouse. I'm just going to put down jailhouse. There you go. You guys had an opportunity, jailhouse. We'll just call it, um, it'll probably just be called um, Crackpot Creek's um, Jailhouse. <laughs> Gabby, you, you and Lady Soros is a giant badge cat. <laughs> uh, Rumbles Ford Anvil. Nice. Okay. Nice one, JP. I've got it. All right. Okay, so I think in terms of what we've got here, we, we have we have filled out what we can. Like we, we can't have every single location under the sun because my map is just not going to hold all of that. Jailhouse is a good name. <laughs> uh, nice. All right, let's 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 draw the sodding thing. <laughs> let's start putting some buildings in here. So I have to have a total of how many places? Uh, 15, 13 locations. The statue's already there. The graveyard is probably out of town anyway, so we won't worry too much about that. And then 13 locations. So in each 13 locations, divided by 4, um, 13 divided by 4 is going to come out at roughly 3, and one is going to have 4. So each location needs to have about 4 buildings. And we probably need to put the bigger ones, and I also need to make sure I have the green, um, town green here somewhere. The town green can be further away from the center, I suppose. Would actually probably make a lot of sense. So I think near the center, we're going to work with our the things that people will use the most. So um, three buildings, bigger buildings first. Okay. So I'm going to put in some buildings. One, two. And a uh, small building there. You can't see it. That's all right. I can. <laughs> and remember, that's what's important, is I can see even if you can't. I'm going to mark them in. Don't you worry. So we'll put in a, a bigger building there. No, we'll move that. Uh, don't forget the stream for the mill. Yeah, we're going to put the stream in for the mill, don't we? Once I figure out where the mill is, I think the mill is going to have to go on the outside of town. Um, right. And then another one here. Uh, we'll put three along here. That gives us four. Quite a large building. We'll make it quite deep. And then another one here. Um... And then this is one, two, three, one, two, three. That's three there. There's four there. Uh, what's that? Quick compass on corner of map so um, we can uh, make location suggestions. Yes, that's a good idea. Right, doing it now. North, south. Uh, God, east, west. God, I hope I got it right. East, west. East, west. If I got my east and west wrong, you'll let me know, people. I know J people. <laughs> um, don't um, don't got to get fancy with the jail. No, nah, not really. Yeah. So I've 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 put my my thing in, um, so you can make suggestions. I haven't put names on anything yet. 
so it's it's all right so you, you you've got control people it's all right <clears throat> and I'm just putting it in the buildings right now and then I'll darken them up and then we'll name them uh, don't forget the stream for the windmill yeah 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 mill mill on the edge of the paper assuming creek is um, is the other side exactly that's right that's exactly what I'm thinking the an altar slab in for the um, sacrifice dark secrets of the no no Lauren not doing that <laughs> you, you can add that yourself um, we could have a retail outlet for um, local orchards <laughs> um, they are backwards I believe no 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 am I backwards somebody will let me know if my compass rose has, has been balled up um. okay so so now I need to put in, oh gosh, a building there, a smaller building here, it's probably going to wind up being like a jailhouse. This here, I think I'm going to make a larger area. And you're probably wondering what the heck this is, but I'm thinking, Corral, you need a lot of space. So, um, but I'll mark this and you'll be able to see what I mean in a second. Uh, so I've put the statue in the center already. The Apple store. <laughs> <We're so laughs> I got it around the wrong way. <laughs> you know, I always get those around the wrong way. It's like, I can't help myself. West, east. There we go. All right. Got it. I got it. I've I've changed it. Shredded wheat. I always have to do. Never eat um, shredded wheat. Okay, so I've got three, three, four. I'm gonna put in another building here. We'll go along. Uh, rough roughing it out now. We'll put in a fairly large one there. Very quick. One, two, three, four. And in the end, this will have to be the windmill, which I'm assuming a windmill would not be that big, but it might have a little side building on the back. And then this is going to go, we'll go deep. Okay, all right, so I'm going to pencil, I'm going to, I've penciled it in, I'm going to pen it, oh no, here we go. Please um, by, feel, feel free to destroy that bot that's currently attacking uh, the live stream, because it, it takes me a little while to just go through and um, remove them. Yes. Uh, report. Come on, you. Report. Yes. And report. Gosh. Um, also, too, if people are re-watching the, uh, the live streams and you notice that YouTube is running a uh, like a uh, mid-roll ads every three or four minutes and not every like um, 10 to 15 minutes you need to let me know in the comments section once the thing gets um, goes uh, you know isn't live so that I can remove them because YouTube can just do that and I got no control okay you reported it thank you Fender that's that's been helpful I've gone through and done it myself as well um, reported four times okay right so I think um, ultimately I need to draw in these which I will, and mark them in dark so you can see. So let's let's mark in dark. Basic structures. Uh, this one here. This here, and that, and then uh, this building. If I am not looking at the chat, it's because I'm busy using this marker. I will come back to that in a second. So rough out of town. Uh, Okay. Now 
Now, right now, if you were thinking, I can't make a town, if you can't do this, I don't know who can. Who can. Like, this, this, is, this is not brain surgery, people. Um, like, I'm just drawing squares, and I've created a little road section, and my drawing's not that great. Okay, so, uh, looking at my chat here, <clears throat> we're going to start naming some stuff. Right now, I'm going to make this the corral and stables. This is the horse hoof, okay? So, um, corral and stables. And this will be the horse hoof. Okay, that's this is the um, the stable section. That's the corral section. Uh, I suppose I should just oh, let's just cross that out. Stable. Okay, let's rough that out. Cool. Whoops. Um, did we lose our stream? Am I um, am I uh, disconnected? No, we're all good. Okay, cool. <clears throat> uh, benches for the statue. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> nice, wonderful. Right, so. We need to put in our some of our major stores and locations so that we now the general store should probably be pretty big. I'm going to put the general store here. Um, yeah, maybe. What are the houses? These are th this is not the these are not living houses. These are going to be different locations in our town. This is a town we're building, right? So that's what we're trying to do here. Um, so you, you look indicate to me where you want certain um, certain buildings that we have named. I have got my list, so it's under control. Yeah, residential is always going to be further out. You you wouldn't have it in the center. That would be like yeah, it would be a bit odd to do that. Um, Gatsby's um, goo, goo cars. Good lord, here we go. Gad, Gadsby's uh, goo, uh, goo cars. Yeah, that's got that. Um, stockyard. Well, we. We, we're probably not going to... Stockyard's going to have to be somewhere else. Um, this is this is just a corral for holding horses. Like, we wouldn't necessarily have cows in It's not necessarily a cow town. Uh, blacksmith needs to be further out too. Yeah, uh, the windmill... You're right, the, the blacksmith does need to be further out. I'm going to put the windmill... Where is it? We named it, didn't we? Uh, church, and corral, pub, hospital... Uh, oh, here we go. The Powdered Creek Flour Mill. Okay, so was it powdered creek or creek powdered flour mill? Creek powdered, creek powder. Okay, flour mill. Mill. That's that, and it's called the creek powdered. Creek powdered. Uh, powdered, powdered. Okay, right, so, church close to the statue, you want to have this church pretty close to the statue, really, okay, um, I think, I'm thinking of putting the blacksmith either here or here, I actually think maybe the blacksmith should be on this other side of where the, um, the corral is in the stables, primarily because that's probably where you would wind up going to do horseshoes the most, so I'm thinking that a, um, a blacksmith right here is probably the best thing to do. The church should be to the northwest. Northwest church. You want to put the church here or here, somewhere around there. We can do that. We can do that. Has to be on the crossroads. Okay. All right. Either a square or a rectangular building. All right, so we'll we'll do that. We'll do that. I'm going to put the blacksmith here. I think this is actually probably the best place to go. So we'll put that there. Blacksmith. And then this is called... Can I fit it in with my pen that I'm using? Or do I need to have a finer pen? I've got a better pen that might be a little bit smaller. Yeah, let's do this one. 
uh, for writing in little letters. Uh, Rumple. No, it's not very good. We'll have to go back to the other one. Never mind. Yeah, flower and fire are not a good combination. Yeah, bye bye, bye bye to everybody. Uh, Rumple. Rumple's Ford. Uh, anvil. That's, that's going there. Um, we put the church in now before I forget and uh, we I, I lose position where I am at. Uh, Lady of Sorrows Church. Oh God, what do I do here? Uh, I messed it up. Um, Lady, Lady of Sorrows. Okay, I got that in. Um, I love the smith having a cottage attached out back like a windmill. A cottage attached. Cottage. There you go, done. Um, you, your wish is my command. <laughs> right, so, let me just tick off the things that I've done. I've done the statue. I've done... The green is probably going to be further out a little bit. Um, I don't know exactly where, but it can be on the outsk outskirts of the town anyway. Um, the town green, it might actually, we might actually have our market right here in the center in the square if need be. Uh, so, church, I've done. General store, I've done. Uh, Powder Creek flower, yes, done that. We've got to put the library in. There was water flowing from. No, 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 too hard, too hard. The river's going to be over. The little stream is going to be running around the back here. So look, um, let's just do, like, probably the easiest way is just to mark it in here. Creek. Okay. All right. Got it. <laughs> Done. <laughs> it should be where the um, the mill is. Um. In the southeast corner of the church be all glass and stain. Uh, yeah, probably. Why not? Yep. So we need the library. We need the masonry shop. I feel like the masonry shop can probably go oh, right here. Like, let's do that. Masonry shop. And it's the crocs pot. Yep, got it. The library. Um, next to the stables. Uh, oh, I'll put it here. It's pretty close. We'll put it there. And it's called... It's also a book bookstore, but I can't write that in, so... Um, Not easily like that. And then uh, tell, tell hearts tales. Tales. Got it. Um, da, 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 da. Herbis near the surgeon. Yes. Let's, let's actually start working with that now because I think you're right. That... Um, The pub should be pretty close to the centre. It should be reasonably close. So let's put it, we're not going to put it right next to the, um, the church. I'll put the pub here. Pub, and it's called Marcos. Okay. Crowl are done. The inn should be quite large. Where would you put the inn? Well, we're going to put the inn right next to a flour mill. That's probably going to piss a lot of people off. That's probably not going to be the place to go. So let's stick our... Put the blacksmith done. Um, the inn, we'll put that by the general store. Inn. And it's the uh, three horse, good lord. And a half. <laughs> Horses. 
Then half horses. We got that one done. Done this one. Um, yeah, <laughs> maybe. Library next to the church. I did that already. It's kind of over there. Uh, the inn. Where are we? Come on. Come on, baby. Come on. Up, 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 up. I think we should put it here. There. There we go. Right there. Um, Medlars. Yep. That's that. Uh, jailhouse. Whoop. And we've done the blacksmith. Pretty happy with that. Have I finished everything? Did a library. I'm missing two buildings. Which ones are they? Uh, 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 uh. Can't think of it. Can't think of it. Too hard. Too hard. Out of flipper. I think I've got them all. Oh, something strange has just happened. Back in a sec. All right, I'm back. I do apologize for that. I had a bit of a problem. Um, let us just get rid of this bot that's returned for the umpteenth time. I do apologize for that. I just, uh, I'm gonna have to um, figure out a better way of doing this in the future. Uh, so, report. Come on, YouTube. Get rid of this. I want to finish this um, this uh, this map now. I've got three locations to label, and I don't know which ones I haven't labeled. Um, yeah, I'm not entirely sure which ones I've forgotten. So I will allow the brains and eyes of somebody else to spot stuff. There's no weaver. We're not putting a weaver in. 
I didn't create a weaver. We're not putting it. We're not fitting a weaver in there. No, no leather worker. No Steve Wolf. No uh, Spirit Wolf. We, we, the, 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 forget about that. <laughs> so what have I forgotten here out of the stuff that I've done? <sighs> okay, so uh, we've got the statue. I've, I haven't marked down a town green because I've decided the town green is going to be like, um, f like further out. Um, church we've done. General store I've done. Flower mall's done. The library's there. Oh, yep, see the library's over here. The masonry shop I've put in. It's a crock's pot. The hospital. Did I miss the hospital? Medlar's apothecary. We've got the hospital. Okay, so. I'm actually going to do. I, I, I know we didn't discuss this, but I'm going to call it. The wear tiger, and I'm going to stick it here. Tiger, and it's going to be a um, hospital. Um, and dentist. Here we go. Okay, that's one of them that I had missed. The pub, I put Marcos here. The corral is in. The inn. Inn, three and a half horses is there. The blacksmith. Did I put the, a blacksmith is over there? Medlar's apothecary. I got that. The jailhouse I shucked over here. I've got two mil, more buildings. Why did it oh I see what you guys are saying. I hadn't actually put in the graveyard. I'm gonna put the graveyard actually um, by the church. I'm gonna put it right here. Graveyard, right there. Yeah. <laughs> no, see, when they get pissed, they will need to go to the hospital, so they need to be able to not have to travel too far. Okay, <laughs> that's <laughs> that, that's what we're dealing with here. Um, just sort in. Yeah, yeah. So I think I've got, and the. That's what we'll do. I'm going to make this the town green. This will be our market area because it's actually one of the larger areas. So town green. So I've just put a box, but it can. It's a ground. It's a, it's it's. <laughs> just imagine there's just. It's just a location filler. Town green. Okay. And um, that's. That actually, I'm pretty sure that covers all of our locations that we were f f trying to fit into here. That that gives us the lot, and that's um, one, two, west, north, south, east. Okay, <clears throat> right. We've done our town. Well done. Amazing. It it happened. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it now has to be turned into something formal or if you're not worried about it, I've got to turn it into something formal you don't need to do that like <laughs> it's not necessary for you to to make it into a formal document but I will have to do that for the patrons is turn this um, this general drawing and sketch and draft into something formal and which I will <laughs> since you're going to need a town so we'll, we'll put it in um, and of course you'll be able to take these ideas and reproduce them and do your own thing. Good. So you guys have already started throwing out lots of ideas of what you can do with this. So this is probably one of the more complicated locations. Some of the other locations that we'll do in the future will be so much easier than this. This is easily the, yeah, it's going to be, this is definitely one of the harder ones. A city is difficult too. I, I can't count how many times that'll, that'll unwind you. Um, but that pretty much gives us the basics to what we need. And I believe we are going to have to wrap it up. So thank you for everybody's um, participation and input. I'm sorry if I did not catch everybody's comments in the chat 
because it was actually quite difficult for me to actually place things and keep an eye on chat and deal with the fact that I need to make sure I have a break um, halfway through a two hour live stream. I cannot go for two hours. Um, it's just not gonna work. <laughs> so, so thank you to my patrons. Um, and uh, thank you to everybody who's been supporting me by watching my videos and coming to my live streams. I really do appreciate that. And uh, rem <laughs> remember, you can do it. You can make your own locations, okay? It's all good. So please, wherever you are in the world, look after yourself, your family, and your friends. Be nice to your neighbors. And hey, till next time, keep rolling those 20s. Ha, ha, ha.